Republicans outlining their bold vision for America ahead of the November midterms and giving voters a clear contrast to the radical policies of the Democrats. The GOP's commitment to America, putting the spotlight on the issues that actually matter to the American people, inflation, crime, border security, all fitting into these four categories. Number one, an economy that's strong, a nation that's safe, a future that's built on freedom, and a government that's accountable. Here's the Republican leadership today. They control the House, the Senate, the White House. They control the committees. They control the agencies. It's their plan. But they have no plan to fix all the problems they created. There can be hope. There can be opportunity so that when you wake up, it's not just to go to work for yourself. It's to go to work to make sure your kids can have a better future. And there's nowhere else in the world where that opportunity exists. Moms and dads across this country, they know that parents are the primary stakeholders in their kids' education, which is why we will pass a parents' bill of rights. Now compare that with President Biden, palling around today with the biggest teachers union in the country. Yeah, the same folks who pushed school shutdowns and masks for your kids. Biden addressing the left-wing National Education Association earlier. The House Minority Leader, Kevin McCarthy, went to Pennsylvania and unveiled on what he calls a commitment to America. That's, a, that's a, a thin series of policy goals with little or no detail. The survival of our, our plan is on the ballot. And that sounds like hyperbole, but it genuinely is. I remember I got beat up in the campaign by saying that I wanted to unify the country and unify the parties. We used to be able to do that. But things have changed a whole bunch. The MAGA Republicans control the Republican Party right now. This November, you have to choose to be a nation of hope, unity, and optimism or a nation of fear, division, and darkness. Oh, very inspiring by the president. So, Judge Jeanine, what did you make of Kevin McCarthy and the entire Republican Party's commitment to America? I think that, that the commitment to America is one that reflects the things that people are interested in. They're interested in inflation, how much it's going to cost to fill your car, your truck up, the, you know, how much food costs. They're interested in education, just like uh, they called it, uh, the parents are the original stakeholders when it comes to their kids. Parents' Bill of Rights, finally. Uh, they're interested in border security. They're interested in the fossil fuel industry and ramping it up again so that we're not, you know, uh, in a position where uh, we're not able to at least afford gas. But here, here's the bottom line of all of this. The Democrats have been in power for two years. Everything has gone to hell in a handbasket in two years, okay? Uh, the, the, the price of everything has gone up. To fill your car has gone up. Crime has gone up. Inflation has gone up. Two million people have entered the uh, country in the last year. We don't know who they are. We don't know who's a pedophile, who's a, who's, who's a criminal. They may be priests. I don't know. But what I do know is that we don't know who they are. We don't have enough place to bury them. I just did a segment on another show. We don't even know where we're burying them. But here's the bottom line. When Joe Biden wants to talk about hope and options and get rid of a, a Republicans, this guy doesn't offer anything other than hate and MAGA Republicans. And that's a sad part about all this. And Ron Klain, he's talking about the people going hungry when Biden came into office. He's talking about businesses being closed. That's because the Democrats are the ones who locked everything down and they didn't even want the vaccine out until after Trump was gone. Look, Joe Biden has responded to all the mess by unnecessary spending, and he's created an inflation that has literally put us into a recession. And their producers are telling me that we just got some fresh new sound from Hillary Clinton. I don't know what the sound is, but apparently it's pretty provocative. Let's Not listen. The sound of music. I remember as a, as a young student, you know, trying to figure out how did people get basically um, drawn in by Hitler? How did that happen? And I'd watch newsreels and I'd see this guy standing up there ranting and raving and people shouting and raising their arms. I thought, what's happened to these people? Why did they believe that? You saw the rally in Ohio the other night. Trump is there ranting and raving for uh, more than an hour and you have these rows of young men with their arms raised. Did I see a 
Hitler salute at a Trump rally? I, I missed that. Might be a minor mischaracterization and also the conflation of a Trump rally and people who feel politically disconnected uh, to the rise of Hitler. That may be a bit of a stretch. And, you know, according to Godwin's law, she's already lost the argument because whenever you have to invoke Hitler or Nazism to make your point, you have failed. She has failed running for president twice. No one really wants to hear what she has to say. Uh, she's not talking about any new ideas. She's not talking about ways to ease people's pain. And Joe Biden standing up there with the most powerful teachers union in the country, parents have not forgotten the pandemic. Parents are watching this who were apolitical before the entire world was shut down. And they're looking at him and all the money that these teachers unions give to Democrats, people who are in power, and all they do is enrich each other. They're looking at that going, how dare you? And they hear Elise Stefanik say, yeah, we're going to come up with a parent's bill of rights. They weren't Republicans before, but they certainly are listening now because they can't afford anything and they have been completely ostracized from their kids' schools. So Hillary Clinton comparing everything to Hitler? Goodbye, dear. Thank I, you. I think we would have seen this before if Trump had a rally over the weekend. It's Friday, and this is the first time I'm hearing about the whole crowd throwing up Nazi salutes. Yeah, this is I, not a real story. No, and, you know, his son, son-in-law, Jared Kushner, I believe, might have an issue with that. Like, this, <laughs> this, is, the, this is what happens. Like, I, I'm, and I can't speak for Harold, but there have been times in my life where you're trying to debate and someone's losing debate and they immediately go to the color of your skin and they'll say something about it, my hat backwards or hood thing. It's the desperate attempt of someone who has lost the argument. Mm -hmm. They've lost the argument and they only talk in echo chambers. She's so lazy with it, she wouldn't even stand up and show any emotion. She just sat there in her chair and, like, how she was so confused with how people were biting in Hitler. And there was the same thing. There was, they, they don't even put emotion and thought. They just speak to hear themselves speak. The good news is, is that the American people are starting to respond. We're starting to see people challenging the woke, and they're doing it now. The only thing that I'm concerned with is the Republicans have a real opportunity here. But just like if you want to build anything... Build Back America, et cetera, however you want to call it. The blueprint needs to be solid. We need to hear plans. The Republicans, if they get in and don't do anything, then they're no better than what we're dealing with right now. So we need plans. We need people to get in, forget the lip service, start telling me how we're going to do it and get this country back on track. I think I know what Hillary was doing here. She either fell for a hoax and is too stupid to realize no one was doing that at the Trump rally, or she knows it's BS, but she just wants to say Trump Hitler Nazi salute because then the media is going to write stories and say Trump Hitler Nazi salute. That's the move. I, I don't. I don't. I don't know the move. Uh, I, I do know, know the move. I know right. it better than she does. I, I did see. In, in fairness, I don't. I don't know what she's talking about fully, but I did see something going around on Twitter where they, there was this picture, the look that they said was at a Trump rally. I don't know if it was. We we'll have the producers. We'll have the producers, we'll have the producers look into yeah. it in the commercial yeah. break. So, so two things. First. Um, I think what the Republicans have done in putting forward a plan is a good thing, uh, whether you agree with it or not. I think campaigns are about choices. And up to this point, all we've heard the Republicans largely say is what they were against. They're against Hunter Biden. They're against Joe Biden. They're against Dr. Fauci. This here is at least something they're for. I do think there's some criticism. Some of the criticism is warranted around. Is it a, is it an in-depth uh, sense of how they're going to go about is the parents bill of rights enumerated those are things they'll have to go through to the campaign but i love the fact we're giving people giving people choices because democrats are saying we're for reducing drug price prices we're for freedom of choice for women and families and doctors we're for reducing taxes on mainstream main street businesses and taxes uh, and gas prices are coming down we can debate why they're coming down and frankly i think the quintessential issue for your kids and my kids and our kids air all of us around this table is whether or not we eject russia uh, from Ukraine, and we seem to have better news today than before, and you got to give the president some credit there. But this is a win-win for the American public tonight, because we finally have the choices, the priorities of the Republicans, and the choices and the priorities of Democrats. And the country is going to have an opportunity to decide. Democrats are encouraged because the polling data shows that this race is tightening. So we can sit here and argue, debate, and quarrel, but when the, when the numbers are good for us, some we, we, we brag about them. When they're bad, bad for us, we have to be willing to, to say, say when they are. The, 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 the polls have tightened. Both sides have laid out what they want to do, and now it's the country's decision, and we'll see here in the next uh, 50, 45 or 50 days. You looked confused, Judge. Did you talk about ejecting Russia out of Ukraine? I absolutely did. Okay. I, think, I said we are, we're winning this. I, hope we're all, I think we're all on the same page on that. We don't want Russia to 
to take Ukraine. Ukraine is winning. And I don't uh, want three. Putin, Putin I, is losing. Right. But but I think the important thing for Americans are 300 Americans are dying a day from fentanyl coming through the southern border. I'm worried about Americans right now who are dying because that border is open. That's like my primary concern is Americans. So my primary concern is Americans also and not allowing Russia to take yeah. Ukraine. Now, you, if you're, you're, if you're, you're affected by no, United no. Nations Week, I know, Harold, there's a lot of diplomats no, no, in town. Said, it's no, kind no, of no, seeping in. Let me just say this. If you're serious, the Republicans are serious about fentanyl, and I believe they are. When I was in Congress and there was a Republican in the White House, his name was George W. Bush, when we had ideas, we put a package together and went over to try to see the president. Kevin McCarthy and Steve Scalise and Mr. Fonick, they should all, the congresswoman should all say, Mr. President, we have a plan to stop fentanyl at the border. Let us come Why over. Why can't Joe Biden come up with a plan? He's the president. But he's you, got the but, House but, but and the Oval and the Senate. But they say he's dumb and he's incompetent and senile. Well, if do he something and prove you're not. He hasn't <laughs> done it yet. Why didn't the so, vice president do something? That's what she was tasked with. No, no, we haven't I, seen her do anything on that. That would be, if, hey, if she had a, a 10 point plan, I would absolutely be listening. She clear, I, haven't seen, I haven't seen anything from her. Kennedy, she clearly doesn't. So if they have one, they had to take it over there. Give it to her right. before the election. <laughs> well, we're all going to have a meeting at the White House on Friday. That is if Joe isn't in Delaware. Here, I'll go with you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.